Hello and welcome to Let's Play King's Quest 1, The Quest for the Crown. King's Quest was originally created by Sierra in 1984 to showcase the capabilities of the then brand new IBM PC Jr. It was a new kind of game for a new computer, something that no one had seen before, a 3D animated adventure. It became the template for most of Sierra's games for the next decade or so and is the grandfather of the modern adventure game as well as the first game for the uh, flagship franchise of Sierra, because unlike the PC Junior, King's Quest was actually successful. King's Quest was re-released several times and ported to many different platforms. Most of the backstory I just read uh, actually comes from the 1984 Grey Box release. The story in the manual of the original IBM version of the game was much more sparse. The version I'm playing here, actually, is the uh, SCI remake, released in 1990. Unlike most of Sierra's remakes, which are in VGA, King's Quest is so old that even the remake is still in 16-color EGA, but it's still a great improvement over the original in both graphics and sound. The game is otherwise pretty much identical to the original. And speaking of sound, I am of course recording the music of this game using my genuine Roland MT32, the way it was meant to sound. Okay, with that out of the way, we can get started. Let's watch the introduction first. You are Sir Graham, the bravest and most honorable knight in the troubled realm of Daventry. King Edward the Benevolent, aged ruler of Daventry, has summoned you to the castle for reasons unknown. Greetings, Sir Graham. The King is expecting you. Allow me to escort you to His Majesty's throne room. Thank you, Sir Knight. Raise the portcullis. I am at your service, my king. I am an old man, Sir Graham. Perhaps too old to carry the weight of this crown. My bones ache, my hands tremble. I am afraid my time on earth grows short, but enough about me. Great misfortunes have befallen Daventry since the loss, years ago, of three magical treasures. I have chosen you, the finest knight in all of Daventry, to search for these lost treasures. Only then can this kingdom be restored to its former glory. And only then may I rest with the knowledge that my people are safe. The first treasure is a magic mirror that foretells the future. The second is a magical shield that protects the bearer from all mortal harm. The third and last is an enchanted chest that is forever filled with gold. I know that what I ask is difficult, nay, perhaps impossible. The dangers are many. But you are brave and pure of heart. That is why I chose you to volunteer. If you succeed, will inherit my crown and will rule the realm of Daventry as her rightful king. Go, Sir Graham, and know that the fate of Daventry lies in your hands. Take heart, my king, I shall not fail you. And that was the introduction. Now let's actually start the game. Personally, I prefer it if they actually just put you in the game after the introduction rather than returning to the title screen. But anyway. And now we are ready to begin our quest to become king. That's why it's called King's Quest after all. The subtitle Quest for the Crown was added in one of the re-releases, I think. It wasn't part of the original IBM release. That short introduction we just saw, which doesn't really give any of the backstory that's in the manual, which is why I read that, 
It's just about the only major difference between the original and this SCI remake. In the original, the game immediately started outside the castle, and you were supposed to go inside and talk to the king by yourself. From here on out though, the two versions are nearly identical, to the point that if you have a walkthrough for the original, you can pretty much use it for this version just as easily. The only other differences there are, are superficial. I think there's one item that changed location, one puzzle was made a bit easier, and the way the points are divided is different, but that's pretty much it. Oh, and by the way, yes, I am aware that there's an unofficial VGA remake of King's Quest 1 made by AGD Interactive, which is actually pretty good. But since Sierra didn't make it, I didn't consider using it for the Let's Plays. I'm using official game releases only. So that goes for King's Quest 2 and 3 as well, just so you're warned. If you've played the ICI version of King's Quest 1 before, um, you might think that it looked different when you played it uh, compared to this. And that's because I'm using ScumVM to play this game. They recently added support for SCI games, and they have a feature called EGA Undithering. Without Undithering, the game actually looks like this. And this is how it looks if you play the game using the official game engine, for example on their DOSBox or on an old PC. ScumVM removes the dithering applied to some of the colors in the background, and it can do that because the backgrounds of SCI games were actually created using a color palette that's higher than what EGA can display. The game's engine would then dither the backgrounds when displaying them, so it could be displayed using uh, EGA's 16 colors. ScumVM simply doesn't apply the dithering when it draws the backgrounds, so it's actually more like non-dithering than undithering, but anyway. I suppose you could argue that this is how the game is supposed to look with the dithering, but unfortunately um, this dithering combined with aspect ratio correction and video compression creates some rather nasty striping effects. This is particularly bad for this game because most screens have more divert colors than not. It's not too bad on this particular screen, but it gets kind of ridiculous in some of the forest areas where every single color is divert, and it just doesn't look good in the videos at all. So I chose to use ScumVM's undivering feature, and you'll just have to live with that. Even with the divering, however, it's still a pretty big improvement over the original, which looked like this. It's pretty clear when you compare this with other early Sierra games like Police Quest 1 or Space Quest 1 and 2, or even King's Quest 2, that King's Quest predated them all. It looks much more primitive. But it was groundbreaking for the time, let me assure you, even if it doesn't seem much uh, today. One of the most amazing features they actually had in the original game was the ability to have your character walk behind things, such as trees or buildings. And that was quite revolutionary. <laughs> yeah, you might laugh about it now, but that really was something that no other game had done before at the time. That's why they called it a 3D animated adventure, you see? The 3D part just refers to the fact that you can walk behind things. It's not what we would normally uh, use the term uh, 3D for um, when it comes to games. But enough of that. Let's get started on our quest to find these three magical MacGuffins. How do we go about that? Well, how do you think we'd go about it in an adventure game? We wander around aimlessly until we happen to find them, picking up everything that's not nailed down in the way. Um, okay, one thing that these games are notorious for, let me speed things up a little bit, um, is the fact that you can die rather easily. So a lot of this Let's Play will be me saving and then dying, either accidentally or um, because I wanted to show you a particular death. For example, you can fall into the moat. He's wearing my hat! That was quick. We already died. These moat monsters appreciate your good taste. Wow. You can die on the first screen. That's what you're gonna have to expect from this game. Dying a lot. Let's take a look around. You're standing outside King Edward's castle, which is surrounded by a serpent-filled moat. And there's some guards. Oh, I think the speed went back then. Let's talk to the guards, see if they have something to say. These stone-faced guards must have been trained not to converse with anybody, 
They ignore you, Sir Graham. I want to go back inside. You reconsider the wisdom of returning to King Edward without having recovered Daventry's three lost treasures. Oh, all right. I suppose. But I want to give him a piece of my mind, because I don't agree that he's a good king or a benevolent king or whatever, if he's managed to lose these three treasures and let the kingdom fall into ruin. I like the reflection, by the way. It's a pretty neat effect for uh, 1990. That's the same message as in front of the castle. Got some pretty uh, smoking plants there. Along the wall. Look at the moat. You never know what sort of fierce creatures lie just beneath the surface of the moat. Yeah, we do. Alligators. No, wait. Serpents. Alligators is the original game. As you could see in that little uh, insert I did. These scaly, slimy serpents cruise the moat, searching for unwary trespassers. Or people who are stupid enough to just walk off the edge right there. A sturdy bridge has been built here to span the moat. And it's not a drawbridge, so I question the usefulness of the moat. And now we're in a forest. Well, like I said, we're just gonna walk around in the hope that we find useful stuff and stumble upon these treasures. Basically, you always want to look around in these games, especially in these really early adventure games. Um, well, not particularly this version of it, but the original anyway was a pretty early adventure game. They tend to take their look descriptions from the style used in text adventures. You're in a shady forest clearing. A large rock rests in the middle of the clearing. And because, well, in text adventures, there were no graphics, so if there was anything important to be seen, it was always pointed out in the text, and that's also the case in this game. So whenever you look and it mentions something uh, specific, odds are that you'll need to do something with it, such as in this case, this large rock here. I'm going to make a, a safe game called Death. Whenever I think I'm going to die, I can reuse that one. What can we do with the rock? You see nothing special, Sir Graham. Hmm. What we can, however, do is try and push it. Oops! The moving rock rolls downhill and right into you. A crushing defeat. Right. I told you this game was going to feature a lot of death. We'll see if we can safely push that rock in the next video.